Does plastic pollution define the Anthropocene? I'm sitting on a pile of pantyhose here in a place called Dead Horse Bay. This is a 1950s landfill that's now exposed to the ocean. And we're finding lots of, there's lots of glass bottles here, old things from the 20s, 30s, and 40s. It closed at 1953, and now it's all exposed, lots of metals and ceramics. At the very top, though, we're finding pantyhose, one of the first synthetic materials that was meant to be thrown away after it was, uh, it was torn and disused. So does plastic pollution define the Anthropocene? What is the Anthropocene? It is a way of describing geologically our presence on the planet. We have, as, as a species, we are a, a force of nature to change the surface of the planet. But can you find that layer that defines humankind? People have argued that it's carbon from the Industrial Revolution or it's fallout from the atomic era. I would argue it's plastics, and here's why. Our research shows that microplastic pollution is everywhere in our oceans, and it's settling down to the seafloor. That smog of plastic is settling out and creating a uniform layer of plastics everywhere, every beach worldwide, ice cores, mountaintops are covered in plastics. Now, how'd this begin? If you look at Life Magazine, 1955, you'll find this article in the magazine called Throw Away Living. And I'll read the first sentence for you. It says, the objects flying through the air in this picture would take 40 years to clean, except that no housewife need bother. They're all meant to be thrown away after use. That's the beginning of Throw Away Living, and this has resulted in plastic pollution covering the entire planet, and that layer of plastic defines the Anthropocene, our time, our species, our presence on this planet.